After the angel's warning, Joseph took Mary and the child Jesus to Egypt, where they lived as refugees until the death of cruel King Herod. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. This fulfilled another ancient prophecy spoken by the Lord. Out of Egypt I called my son. So Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Nazareth, where he grew up along with his half-brothers and sisters. In many ways, the boy Jesus was like other children. He ate, slept, played, studied, and learned a trade. But in other ways, Jesus was different from other kids. He was never selfish. He always honored his parents. He never lied. He always pleased his Father in heaven. He was holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners. Jesus is the only perfect child in history. Perfect does not mean he never had a skinned knee or a pimple. It means he had a perfect nature. He was perfectly holy and good. He was also perfect in power and wisdom. But before entering Mary's womb, he imposed on himself certain limitations so that he might live as a human among humans. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. When Jesus was 12 years old, he traveled with his parents from Nazareth to Jerusalem for the annual feast of the sacrifice known as the Passover. While his boyhood friends explored the big city, Jesus spent the week in the temple courtyard, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. The temple was the place where lambs were burned on an altar for the sins of the people. The boy Jesus understood what the scholars did not. He had come to offer the last lamb. Thirty years had passed since Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Caesar Augustus was dead. His stepson, Caesar Tiberius, reigned over the Roman Empire. Herod Antipas ruled in Galilee. Pontius Pilate governed in Judea. And a new prophet was preaching in Palestine. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent! for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt round his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. While many people of his day dressed in fine silk and ate the best food, John lived simply. He was a man on a mission. John was the king's forerunner. Hundreds of years earlier, two prophets, Isaiah and Malachi, wrote about a future prophet who would announce the Messiah King's arrival. John was that prophet. While the previous prophets had prophesied at the right time, the promised Savior will come to earth. John preached, that time has come. The Savior is here. Crowds streamed into the desert to hear John. Those who confessed their condition as sinners in need of the Savior were baptized in the Jordan River. In this way, they showed their faith in the Messiah who would wash away their great debt of sin and clothe them in his righteousness. Day after day, week after week, John spoke to the people about the long-awaited Savior from heaven, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
Then one day, the Savior came. Over the hill, through the crowd, and down to where John was baptizing. John pointed to Jesus and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Why did John call Jesus the Lamb of God? If you know why, then you know the King's mission. Jesus asked John to baptize him. John objected because the Messiah King who came from heaven had no need to repent. Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. So John baptized Jesus. By being baptized, Jesus showed that he belonged to the human family he had come to rescue. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. As on the first day of creation, God's complex unity is again revealed. Even as God, his spirit, and his word worked as one to create the world, so now they would work as one to save it. We see the spirit of God, who in the beginning was hovering over the waters, come upon Jesus. We watch the Son of God, the Word who created the world, walk up out of the river. We hear the Father speaking from heaven. Over the past 30 years, Jesus had lived in obscurity out of the public eye, but his Father in heaven had observed his every thought, word, and action. And what was God's verdict on his Son's life? With him, I am well pleased. In all human history, Jesus is the only one who did everything God requires. Everything, always, perfectly. Jesus did what Adam failed to do, reflect the image of God. But Jesus did more than reflect it. He was it. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. No wonder Jesus would later say, I and the Father are one. Jesus is the perfect Son. Satan was not happy that this perfect man was living in his kingdom. But the devil had a strategy. Just as he attempted the first man to sin, so now he would try to get this man to sin. Satan wanted to bring Jesus under his control, even as he had brought Adam under his control. If the Son of God could be enticed to sin, then he would not be qualified to save his people from their sin. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, 
he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus was hungry, but he did not obey the devil. He would not act outside his Father's will. He would not use his infinite power to satisfy his human desires. To combat the devil, Jesus quoted from the Torah of Moses. It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In his stupid pride, the devil tried again to tempt the Holy One. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. When Adam sinned, mankind lost the right to rule the earth. Satan had stolen the dominion of the world, making himself its king. Now the king of glory was on earth to take back the dominion, but he would not do it by bowing to the one he had come to crush. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Finally, the devil left Jesus. Satan had never tempted anyone like him a man who had no desire or capacity to sin. Jesus was different from Adam and his descendants. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. Adam was the first perfect man. Jesus was the second perfect man. When Satan tempted Adam to sin, Adam lost and Satan won. When Satan tried to get Jesus to sin, Satan lost and Jesus won. The first man led us into Satan's kingdom of sin and death. The second man came to lead us out. After Satan's futile attempts to get him to sin, Jesus returned to Nazareth, where he had grown up and had worked as a carpenter. On the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. The synagogue was a house of worship where the scriptures were read and explained every Saturday. On this particular Saturday, Jesus had an announcement to make. He stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. What Jesus read in the scriptures was an ancient prophecy about the Messiah King who would show the world what God is like and rescue sinners from the dominion of Satan, sin, death, and hell. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. How did Jesus' neighbors react to his claim to be the Messiah who came from heaven to fulfill what the prophets had written in the scriptures? All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Jesus had dominion. Unlike Adam's sin-infected and dying descendants, the Messiah King anointed by God was in perfect control.
No one could touch him unless he allowed it. But he would touch them. <laughs> 